Hello seniors, as you embark on your first major project in this course of your senior year English class, I wanted to make sure the instructions for this project were extremely clear and that you knew exactly what is expected of you uh, in order to be successful on this project. And so as we move forward, I don't really have any expectations as you work through this PowerPoint. All I really expect is that you're just paying attention. I will at some point upload this uh, PowerPoint into our Teams page so you can have it there consistently and you can always go back and reference it. Um, so for now, just work through this video and pay close attention and make sure you understand exactly what's expected of you as we start this project. So obviously this is your first major project of the class um, and it is a big one guys and so it's a it's a hundred points it's basically an essay um, but it's a hundred points and it goes in the independent work category which we know from the first week of school is 70 percent of your grade so it's a big one okay and so i want you to do well on this i want you to be successful as this will definitely impact your grade okay, so just a few things on that so the project itself um, i know there was some mis communication on my end. I changed my mind, like I said yesterday. I changed my mind. Instead of making it three events, uh, you are going to select one event, one moment in your life that you like to write about. Um, this moment, it can be serious. It can be sad. It can be joyful. It can be funny, even a little dark. Okay. Fair warning. If you share something with me that's dark in your personal narrative, and I feel like it, I need to report it, I will do that. Okay, I am obligated to report that. And I'm talking about in a situation if you have been hurt or someone has hurt you, just know, fair warning, I will report that um, to the proper people. So that's just a, a fair warning for you guys. Um, so examples of some of the things that you could write about. Um, and this actually came from some of your guys' flip grids. And so I stole this from some of you guys. So some things that you could write about. Um, your first boyfriend, your first girlfriend, your first kiss, death of a loved one, parents divorce, first job, birth of a sibling. It could be something sports related. Uh, your first heartbreak, a tragic moment, a proud moment, a fun or embarrassing moment. And so again, you want to think of something that you can actually write about. You have a choice here. You want to think of a moment that has either been uh, really impactful in your life or a moment that you really remember. Pick a moment that you feel comfortable and you feel good writing about, right? Something that you know you could spend some time and give lots of details on this, on this uh, assignment. Okay, don't pick something where it's like, yeah, it was cool, it was important in my life, but I, I don't really know how to talk about it, right? So you want to pick something that you feel good about and something that you can actually share. Again, it can be sad, it can be serious. Uh, but again, the point is that you've, you've hopefully learned something from it. I wanted to also add, because we're only doing one life event now, um, your expressive project is expected to have a clear beginning, a middle, and an end. And so it's a story, right? It's a narrative. And, and it should have those three parts. And we'll work together, and I'll ensure that you know what those parts look like. I'm actually working on creating... Uh, my own example to kind of share with you guys and hopefully that can be a model for you as you start writing your own. So that's important. Remember one event now, not three, one event, a beginning, a middle, should have an end. Now also, when you end this thing, this is kind of important, um, you should have, you're wrapping it up and you're basically telling me what you've learned from this moment, right? From what, what did you gain from this moment in your life? And so this can be um, kind of lengthy sometimes. And so this is one of the big reasons, too, that I put it to one event and not three. Okay? Because I want you towards the end, to, as you wrap up your writing, to be able to tell me, like, this taught me this. This event taught me that. I learned from this, that. And again, I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to give you a model, uh, hopefully Friday or Monday, and then we'll keep working on it. So some major requirements. I'm sure a lot of you kind of want to know what is required in this project. So number one, straight out, uh, it is two to four pages typed double spaced. All of you have a computer, so that's exactly how many pages I'm looking for it to be. Two to four pages typed double space. It needs to be in proper MLA format, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, you need to have vivid details, and I'm gonna give you an example here 
of, of, of a paragraph of kind of what I'm looking for. Okay, but you need to have vivid details. And what I also mean by that is referring back to that website that you worked through yesterday. You guys worked through a website and you took some notes. And so I want you to use that and reference that as you're writing your own personal narrative. Uh, the next thing is you need to have some more people in there. You need to have some characters, right? And, and again, it's a personal narrative, so it's totally okay if they're real life people, right? And I'll, you'll see that in my example as well, but it shouldn't just be I, 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 right? You need to have more people involved in this narrative. Um, I also want to incorporate dialogue. A okay? dialogue is actual conversation between two people. You'll see that too. And last but not least, um, you need to have at least one picture or one image that's connected to your narrative. And again, that is going to be embedded into your writing. So I know some people um, will put it like on the first page, some people will put it on the second page or the final page, but you need to have at least one image that connects to your narrative, okay? It can be a picture, it can be something you've created, it can be a physical picture, it can be something you found online, but you need to have some picture that's connected to the narrative. Um, so what I wanna do now, guys, is I want to show you um, an example, right? So here's an example, not a whole narrative, but just, just a paragraph. And so I'm gonna read this to you and I just want you to follow along with me, please. When I was 16 years old, I found my first love. When I was 17 years old, my first love was gone. We met at Carl Hayden. He was in my English class and I was stuck on him right away. His name was Eric. He was tall, athletic, handsome, funny, smart, and stylish. He must have known I was into him because he didn't waste should be waste, sorry, waste any time. He asked if I wanted to go to the movies with him. I tried not to look excited, so I quietly said yes and gave him my Snapchat. Okay, so first off, nothing really wrong with this per se, guys, because you are telling me a story. Like, I wouldn't say that this is bad. Okay, it's definitely some writing there, and I, I'm getting some details, but I want you to see if you can challenge yourself to be even more descriptive right, be even more detailed. And so if, if I were just grading this paragraph on the rubric that you're gonna get, I would say this is like C-ish, right? This is C-ish work right here. It's Again, it's not bad, it's not terrible, but it's just telling me some details. Now I'm gonna show you an example on the next slide that hopefully gives you a better idea of what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna give you a better example and then we're gonna compare the two. So here's the better example. Most girls wait an eternity to find the love of their life. For me, it only took 16 years. I first laid eyes on him in my second hour English class at Carl Hayden. Eric was everything. Of course he was handsome, with his lean, stylish, athletic build, but I was most attracted to his mind. He was intelligent, motivated, and I knew he was going places. It's almost like we were meant for each other. Beaming with confidence, he proudly walked over to me. Hey Sarah, let's go see a movie this weekend, yeah? I wanted to explode, but I kept my cool and timidly gave him my Snapchat. So this example, although it's not perfect, I think there's some things here and I'll show you on the next slide that it, it does a little better than the first example that I gave you. Okay, and right off the bat, you probably saw that there's some dialogue in here, right? Again, dialogue is like, you're actually telling me what that person said. And the dialogue here is, hey, Sarah, let's go see a movie this weekend, yeah? Right, so that's what I'm looking for. I want some dialogue in your writing. So I think this is also something you guys can do. I don't think this is like too professional, like a professional writer. Obviously, I wrote it, and I'm not a professional writer. Okay, so let's, let's compare the two examples and see what the second one is doing a little bit better in some of the changes that were made. So if we're looking right here, at the second paragraph, guys, um, we see that right off the bat, it starts differently than the first paragraph. If you look at this first sentence here, and you look at the first sentence here, uh, it's, it started differently, right? And so what I like about this paragraph right here, the second paragraph, is that sentence starts with like engaging more people, right? Engaging more of the audience. It doesn't say like, it doesn't start with I. It kind of relates to the audience, most girls. Right, it reaches out to a broader group of people. Also, the word here, eternity, that's a pretty strong word. 
right? Love of their life, another strong phrase, okay? Now, I highlighted this line right here, this very short sentence, Eric was everything. And I did that because if you look at the first example paragraph, you'll see that the sentences are like almost all of them are the same length. This one, I think it's important that sometimes when we write, we add like shorter sentences. We add like a combination of short and long sentences because that really helps the flow of our writing. So that's why I highlighted in red, Eric was everything. Okay. Now, if we look at the next sentence, I, I bolded it and put it in red, but I was most attracted to his mind. Again, this gives us a little deeper insight into... Um, like why this fictitious person was into this guy named Eric. Again, I just totally made this up. But I would also argue that if you're going to say you found the love of your life, right, I would hope, and again, this may not be true for everyone, I would hope that you're, there's more to that person than just the way they look, right? And I would agree, argue that most people, when they're attracted to people, are attracted to other qualities in that person besides the way they look, okay? And so that's what was done here. He was intelligent and motivated and he knew he was going places. So that makes it feel a little more real, right? It makes it feel like, oh, okay, like I can see why then you might be so into this 16 year old dude because you knew he was gonna become something, right? So th that's why I, I highlighted those as well. Uh, again, I talked about the, the dialogue. I talked about the dialogue here. So. Hey Sarah, let's go see a, a movie this weekend. This yeah, and, and that's ex and that's exactly now. what I'm also looking for you to do. Uh, and the last line, I wanted to explode again. That's a strong word there, and then timidly, which means shyly, another good word there. So hopefully you see the differences between these two uh, sections. Again, the first one isn't terrible. I think the second one is just a little bit stronger and more of what I'm looking for for this project. Now. Um, this is all tentative, guys. I put together for you a little bit of a timeline on how I like to go about getting this project completed. So obviously, we're today, um, August 19th is a Wednesday. So today, after you get done viewing this um, video, you are going to brainstorm. We're gonna, I'm going to show you my brainstorm, and then we're going to brainstorm together. And hopefully, if we have some time, you're going to submit your brainstorm to me via another Flipgrid, because I really, really like those, and you guys did a good job. Okay. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to spend a good chunk of class time uh, brainstorming, right? Or, excuse me, writing the narrative, like starting to draft it, at least hopefully like an opening scene, like the beginning section of your narrative. And so that'll be done in class. I'll show you an example. And then um, I will give you some time to work and I'll conference and help and, and do all that good stuff. Now, Friday, we do have some stuff to do on Friday that is not necessarily the Expressor project. Remember, Friday, we have to do um, our third article of the week, and then you have to take a quiz on that as well. So you're, you're, you, you'll have time to work um, on your narrative on Friday, but not the entire hour. So maybe like 30 minutes or so. Um, and then I would expect you also to be working on this um, at home as well. So I'd, ex I'd give you Saturday and Sunday to get some more stuff done. Uh, Monday, I'm gonna have you come back and we'll we'll work a little bit um, and then you're gonna record your rough draft on a flip grid and hopefully you're able to work with some other people and get to hear their writing as well. Tuesday, I'm not quite sure what that day is gonna look like yet, but right now, the date that you wanna be paying attention to is Wednesday, August 26th, which is, which is exactly one week from today. That is the tentative due date. Um, at this point in the game, guys, that is the earliest it will be due. The earliest. Okay, now there are possibilities you'll see with my projects that if I feel like I haven't taught something right or if I haven't clarified or you still need more help or you're struggling, I can extend a due date. But right now we are planning on one week from today. Wednesday, August 26th would be our due date. Again, that's the plan that can change, but we're gonna plan for that right now. So you, all of you need to be working as if that is our earliest due date, okay? So uh, this project, this video will be saved. Um, I, the last thing I want you to do is think of some questions. And as you're done, we're gonna recap this video and talk about it as a class. So thanks guys, we'll talk right now.